Woohoo! Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Matt Chat with Coach Les and Mr. John Yarwood from Yarwood's Martial Arts. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are here today with part two of Attitude, a fundamental aspect of martial arts, shaping not only how students approach their training, but also how they carry themselves in everyday life. A martial artist's attitude reflects discipline, respect, humility, and perseverance. And we sp have spoken in the last episode, we spoke of respect for others, humility, perseverance, discipline, and self-control, focus and mental fortitude, positivity, and growth mindset. And today we're going to spend some time on my one of my favorite pieces of coaching, accountability, and something that I, I once in a while I struggle with. Imagine that, calmness <laughs> under pressure. Then respect for tradition and values, thumbs up, service and leadership. And with that, I'm going to let Mr. Yarwood kick it off and get the conversation rolling, and then I will jump in. So welcome, Mr. Yarwood. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so um, attitude permeates everything that we do at our school, and it also permeates everything we do in life. How you approach something uh, can really dictate the outcome that you're looking for, right? If you come into something with a bad attitude, then you have little mistakes along the way, little hiccups, little um, little barriers. They're gonna suck because you're in a you know your attitude about it is negative, and everything's everything's against me and life sucks and I'm never, you know, all that stuff. Right. So attitude is, is vital to how we approach things. And when we talk about um, accountability in, in, um, in what we do, it, it's, you're taking responsibility for, for the actions that you take. Right. And that part of that accountability is your attitude. When you're, uh, when you, you know, you get to dictate how you feel about something, right. It's nobody else's decision. Somebody can be mad at you somebody can yell at you before you go do what it is you're going to do and then you let that affect how you respond to everything else then that attitude is going to spread so when you have accountability for yourself part of it is your attitude so you got to make sure when you're going into something if you're not feeling good about something if you're in a bad mood about something just stop think about what it is that's that that's going on in your head and then try and change that to that positive part what is that was it a positive aspects of what it is I get to do right now versus, man, I have to do this. This sucks. I don't want to do this. Right. It's all about, you know, um, how you approach things and we're going to make mistakes. We're going to have problems. Like if we're training, we're going to make, make mistakes in how we do our kicking, how we do our blocking. We miss stances. We miss moves. We have all kinds of things that happen, right? That's part of, that's part of training. You know, I just had a, uh, I was just in Fort Worth at, in, at Fall Nationals, and um, we were midterm testing, myself, Mr. Richardson, and Mr. Rodriguez, and we all had our own little issues while we were doing that, right? Nobody's perfect about stuff, but we all had a great attitude about the outcome because we went into it, you know, saying, hey, we're, we're here to do our best. We've done all the training. We just got to kind of let things go, and then, we, you know, we got done. We uh, We – out and said thank you to our to our seniors and we hugged each other said good job and we moved on right but if we had gone into that with a bad attitude i think all of us probably would have failed because we'd have approached it from a different point of view and get angry about messing something up or missing a board break or whatever it is it really has a, a, a huge effect on on the outcome of what it is you're trying to do so i think um, the, the, the attitude is probably where everything is going to start. Well, I look at that and jump right into this piece called accountability, right? And for me, I, I, I see that, in, you know, in my coaching business, I do four fundamental aspects, right? The first is integrity. The second is accountability. The third is structures for fulfillment and the fourth is grace. And that second one, accountability, is something that so many people struggle with. 
and partly because the our internal dialogues that little conversation and somebody goes well what do you mean that little internal dialogue well stop speaking for a moment and it's that little voice that says what does he want me to hear am uh, am i supposed to be listening for something yeah that little voice that's telling you all of that <laughs> that's you know for me holding you accountable for something and having that little voice become not a pain in the butt having that little voice become a powerful tool to have you move through not only just life itself but move through the steps and processes that are going to present themselves moving forward and seeing that if i can hold myself accountable for taking 10 steps and those last two steps are you know blown up how do i still hold myself accountable create a way to support bringing that, that those steps back together and then being able to walk on them that's the name of the game for me that's the the interest in which i have as um holding somebody accountable for their word they give word creates reality the power of word is absolutely off the charts i mean it really is off the charts I, 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 you know i i laugh because one of the most famous ones comes from a little green guy with ears right right you know that yes, one sir. yes sir <laughs> and you know i see it 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 has become something that society has said wow this is a great thing and now there the little green guy is all over the place unbelievably that i don't have one in my office yet but there's <laughs> wishy little toys all of yoda and you know his fame you know famous or infamous however you want to talk about it his famous quote that is such a big part of the movie um was it star wars yeah, star wars yeah, yeah. God, he's in uh, empire strikes back yeah to start with yeah and here it is i'll see if i can play it here Try. No. Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. No, don't One try. more time. No. Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. <laughs> <laughs> And it, yes, it's kind of funny, but that has impacted our world from all the way globally, everywhere. People yep. know that little green guy for saying that. Yep. And even if they don't know the green guy, <laughs> they know the phrase, right? <laughs> They don't even there there could be people who've never even heard of Yoda but they know what he said because of the impact that it makes. We we talk about it in in training all the time. Mr. Yarwood, I'm going to try my best. They know you're not going to try your best. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. You might fail when you do it, but then you just do it again. But trying is doesn't exist. I'm going to try. <laughs> <clears throat> so one of the things that you wrote here martial artists are encouraged to take responsibility for their actions both in training and in their personal lives whether it's correcting mistakes in technique or accepting the consequences of their behavior accountability is a key attitude promoted in martial arts and one of the things that Mr. Yarwood is so powerful at how are you taking accountability for your actions outside of the dojo yes 
where 98% of your life is happening. <laughs> sure. And, and there are those people go, well, I take my, I take my, I take my clothes off, my, my karate clothes off. Why should I, you know, I, I don't need to like be that person. And that is why you're stuck in your training. Yep. We even, we have a, um, a policy, I guess you could call it, that if you leave something at the dojo that's yours, you owe us for getting it back. And depending on what the item is, that payment gets bigger. <laughs> like if they leave their, their hand pads, they have to do 10 push-ups before they get it back. If they leave their phone, which has happened a few times, it's 25 burpees. Woo! That is something that has a lot more value to it, has a lot more, you know, um, significance to it. So, but we always make sure that they understand that they are responsible for their stuff. They have to have accountability. And if they don't have accountability, it's going to permeate in everything else they do. So we try and make sure that they understand that, hey, you have this is your stuff. It's not mom and dad's stuff. It's not anybody else's. It's yours. You are responsible for it. And the excuse of, well, my mom forgot whatever. No, your mom didn't forget anything. You forgot it. You can't rely on your mom to take <laughs> care of all your stuff. <laughs> and and I think this this really brings up a big point. What you just said is for some reason in today's society. Parents have a thought, well, I didn't have this when I was a kid, so I want to provide it for my kid. And this was really tough for me when I was a kid. I don't want it to be tough for my kids. I just want to be able to provide for them. It's like, stop. Yep. Part of who you are was that training that your parents put you through. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, it wasn't because they couldn't do it for you. It's because they knew that it would provide a lesson in shaping and determining who you are. Yep. And if we take that away, <laughs> I mean, when you and you could see it in society today, more and more people are relying on the government to provide them for their life. And then we wonder why we pay more in taxes. And then we wonder why we government is the single most suck hole for money in the country. Yep. <laughs> we have a one of our stripes is a at home stripe. And the one of the big parts of it is um, our kids having accountability for what they do at home. Um, four different things. One, their homework, if they have homework that they brought home from school. Two, is doing their chores without being told to do them. They know what chores they're supposed to do. And it's not mom and dad's responsibility to remind them. It's their, their job to know. Three, is doing the extra things that they know need to be done that not aren't necessarily their chores. So instead of saying, that's not my job, they see something that needs to get taken care of, and they take care of it. And then the fourth thing is their actual training at home, their accountability for them for their physical. So we create we we create uh, scenarios for them to build that accountability into what they're doing in their everyday lives when they're at home and not at the dojo. And it's their responsibility to do those things, and it's mom and dad's responsibility to monitor, but not make them do their stuff. Right. It's mom and dad's job to hold them accountable for the things that they're supposed to do. Because if they if, uh, I always tell the parents and the kids, I said, if mom and dad tell you, always tell you what to do. And then you grow up and you're 26 years old and you're going to try and get a job and you're working and you're waiting for your boss to tell you what to do. You're not going to be in that job very long. <laughs> We're going to get tired of telling you what to do. You should know. It's not my responsibility to tell you what to do. It's your responsibility to know what to do and then find the other things extra that need to get done. That's what gets you promoted. That's what gets you into the good positions, right? If you're just waiting, you're all, you'll are all you be waiting your entire life. 
because mom and dad aren't going to be there to hold your hand. And it's one of those things, too, when you look at what it takes to become a world-class athlete. Yep. You ask a guy like Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods, and they don't just <laughs> walk up to the basketball court, nope. grab a ball, and start playing. Nope. Kobe Bryant. That's uh, Larry Larry Bird. Yeah, that's a culmination of their training is getting on the court and playing. That's like the end of it. That's like that little minuscule piece they've been doing all the work in the background. Yep. To do those few minutes on the court. Yep. Yep. The games aren't one on the court. They're one in practice. They're one in training. Because if you're not ready for the game. You're not going to win. Yeah. So we think about calmness under pressure. How many of us, you know, will hear something or dealing with something and then suddenly just kind of go. <sighs> <laughs> Let it all out. That's part of it. Right, teaching martial arts teaches students to remain calm and composed even in a high stress. And that high stress is all interpreted, it's all made up. And it's made up to disempower you and to have you be stuck and stay in the same place. Yep. And some people go, yeah, well, that's great. That's just what I want. It's like, eh, okay, well, maybe you're part of that tiny percentage that doesn't want to change. And good luck with that. <laughs> well, th there's only two options. You grow or you don't. And if you're not growing, what are you doing? <laughs> there's there's no there's no status quo. Things are always changing, always evolving, always moving. And if you plant yourself in one spot, it's over. But Mr. Yarwood, can I sit on the coach and just chill for a couple days? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> but when you come back, you're going to be lost, you're going to be behind, you're going to be whatever. Yeah, and, you know, I look at my myself, right? I'm dealing with that same situation. You know, I got hurt a year, almost it's coming up on a year and took some time off and then allowed work to get in the way and, you know, just – had a number of issues and stuff that I could use, reasons, excuses, and I'm going to end up having to go back to the basics, like all the way back to the first form and rebuild from the beginning again. And, you know, then that's another thing that, you know, here I am once again now looking at that accountability piece. And what do I give my word to? What do I say is going to be there? And in that calmness, in that space, under the pressure of everybody looking at me going, whoa, what about what, what happened? Where, what are you doing? Why aren't you? Why didn't you? Why can't you? To be able to just get this is this is life and this is a journey at this moment. And not making it right or wrong. And then being the at the eye of the storm where the calm is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
Number nine. You want to go with number nine there, sir? Ah, uh, yes. Respect for tradition and value. So we have a lot of traditions in, in Taekwondo. There's a lot of little nuanced things that we do when we bow, uh, how we shake hands, how we address each other, how we, uh, how we train. Um, there's so many different traditions that go into it that root us in, in the past, uh, you know, our forefathers, our predecessors, whatever you want to call them, who created this. And traditions and values, I think, are, are uh, important because they help guide us to where we want to go, right? And this attitude of, of understanding our, our traditions help us to be able to grow moving forward, I think, because we might be able to, you know, we, we, we take those traditions, some of them, they might seem outdated or silly or whatever it is, but they're what built what we are right and i i have i have a great sense of respect for the tradition that we have we you know we uh we bow to each other we call each other sir and ma'am uh the way we shake hands the way we respond to our instructors the way we bow to the flags we say an oath um the way we're getting ready to have a black belt test on saturday and there's a whole tea and candle ceremony that's rooted in the in the past and in and in tradition for how we pass knowledge to each other um how we treat each other all those things and it's it's just it's really the foundation of everything that we do because if we don't have that we really just don't have much to stand on we just kind of go by what we feel and that's really it's not a way to really kind of go through all of the all of the training and all the stuff that we're doing and it's just it's it creates a connection to the people who were before us who gave us the knowledge like i have my students have a connection to me i have a connection to my instructor my instructor has a connection to her instructor all the way back and we with for example our um our candle we the flame is is um representative of the knowledge of of taekwondo that's been passed on from our instructors so when we pass the flame to our students that's passing the knowledge that we got from way back so it's a super cool way to express tradition express everything that we're doing just in one little one little tradition that we have so it's it's in, it's it's a vital part of everything we do because it connects all of us together Which, when you think about it, that's part of the whole service and leadership piece, right? Is that it's that connection to, you know, as a martial artist, that progress. Yep. You know, um, one of the things that I know that you're very good at, Mr. Yarwood, is having people that have got it, that catch on, then support those people that haven't. And, you know... And and I look at that to me as when all boats rise. Yep. And I know that for some people that's really frustrating. It's like, come on, I got that move and I got it memorized. Let's go, let's go, let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. And it's like, yep. Relax. Yeah. There's no hurry. You know, we don't have to get there fast. <laughs> Right. If you're trying to get there fast, you're not going to be doing very well. Right. I already know that move. Let's do the next one. Well, that's fine. But let me watch that move and see how much you really know about that move. Right. It's one thing to to do it. It's another thing to understand it and why you're doing it and how it works and all the different parts that go into that move. So it's like when you uh, when you go too fast with things, you, there's things you miss. There's parts of it that you don't fully understand that you fully get, and uh, it's it's a it's a vital part of understanding where you're going, right? And what I like to do, like we have a uh, an instructor program. I'm teaching. We have kids who are nine years old in my instructor program. They're learning the value of of all of these things that go into training, and when they start teaching other kids or other people, they start to realize 
Oh, wow. That's what Mr. Yarrow had meant when he said that. That's what he's trying to get through me, right? And he doesn't, you know, they go, that, that light bulb comes on, right? And then they start to understand the way I see things, the way I look at things, the way I watch them train, the way I try and teach them, the, the, the values that I try and instill in them. They're starting to get it because they're they're seeing themselves through the other students that they're trying to teach. It's it's awesome to see all of a sudden they go, oh, I get it. So it's it's really cool to to witness a a a, a, a person going through that and and starting to to really get that leadership piece and what it means to be a leader, what it means to serve other people, and it's 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 a it's a fascinating to watch because it it's it's like this this. Um, I don't know. I think of like a, a butterfly, right? A monarch when it starts as a caterpillar, right? All of my students are little caterpillars and then they go into the, that little green pupa thing or whatever it's called. And then they emerge on the other side with a, a, a butterfly, right? I see that in my students. They come in as a white belt and they're learning all these things. And then they join all these other programs. They become instructors and suddenly they're in the front going, they're, wow this is really cool it's not narrow right it's this big broad picture that they see and it's it's awesome to see that and i think with uh great leaders are always causing great leaders yep. it's, it's part of the authentic next level of leadership and I like what you wrote here. As martial artists progress, they're often called upon to help guide beginners, serve the dojo or gym, and take on leadership roles. This fosters an attitude of service, humility, and responsibility responsibility toward the community, reflecting a commitment to helping others grow. Black belt attitude. Yep. That's exactly what I talk about when I say that. <laughs> And I ask the kids, what does black belt attitude mean? And they say, their first answer, if they don't really know, is acting like a black belt. I say, okay, what does that mean? When you're acting like a black belt, what are you doing? And that's where all these things come in. All these principles of, of that we just talked about with attitude. All of that. There's this and then some, right? And it takes time for them to learn it. That's why I say you can't learn it fast. Cause you're not going to understand it. You gotta, you gotta live in it. You gotta be part of it. It's gotta be internalized and they have to get to the point where it makes sense beyond just words, right? There's feelings, there's experience, there's all these other things that go into it. And once they start to understand what a black belt attitude really is, that's when they truly become a black belt. Even if they aren't officially a black belt around their waist, some some get to that point and don't understand it, unfortunately, right? But for the most part, once they get it, they're like, oh, the path becomes clear. <laughs> the light turned on. Light. And they go, oh, now I get what you're talking about, sir. Like, yep. And I think one of the things for me that, you know, we just hired our daughter to do some training. In, in the the Cullen's wine uh, Cullen's wine shops the Cullen's ice cream shops and you know the question was asked well why is she doing the training why can't we do it and it's like because you give her some of the accountability and authority to be a force to be reckoned with and that is, I don't even know how to say it uh, other than all uh, other than, and, and I don't, I, I could go on for hours on this, but these core things on here, these 11, 10 conversations about attitude are so important in so many things that, that are, have nothing to do with martial arts. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's what I love about what I do because I can use the martial arts for this purpose right here. It's a conduit to all the other things. It's a path through life. 
it sounds kind of grandiose and whatever, right? But it's true. You can talk to all of our parents who've been there for a while and understand what it is we're doing. And they'll say that Taekwondo changed their child's life. But it's not because of their learning how to do a punch or a kick. It has nothing to do with that. You'll ask them that question and it has nothing. They say, no, it's not the punching and kicking. That's just what we do. It's what they learn from that, the, the lessons they take from it. Yeah. yeah. The stuff back there. Yeah. yeah. It's all those other aspects of everything that they're learning while learning how to punch and kick. And it's, it's, it, parents are just, they're, they're so grateful for the fact that their kids get to come in there and learn this stuff. And then I can help teach the parents to be able to understand how to do it with their kids and themselves because some of the parents don't know either. And they're, they're learning whether they're training with us or sitting and watching their kids train, they're learning the same, the same values, the same, everything that we're doing by being there and listening and understanding how we're, how we're teaching it to their children. And, and that has been so powerful. They've gotten off the seat and come and join in. Yep. They want to be part of it. Yeah. How can I do this? How can I, how can I enjoy this? They get to spend time with their kids. They get to learn more about themselves. What it is that they can accomplish that they didn't realize just by getting out on the mats and doing it with them. Yeah. And that kind of goes with with the, what we say at the end. Overall, the attitude instilled in martial arts goes beyond physical techniques, shaping a practitioner's character and how they approach life, challenges, and relationships. It permeates everything that they do. If they'll let it, they have to they have to 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 be open to it. Because if they're resistant to it, they're not going to get it. No, oh, and then it's like trying to push a rock uphill. <laughs> a boulder uphill excuse me yep yeah well i appreciate this and this this is um i think you know to finish off the the conversation about attitude i think this has been really great um just so you know people if you ever have any questions you can reach out um you know we're streaming this on facebook youtube x um, we'll have it back in, uh, LinkedIn. They just were having some problems on LinkedIn. Um, please take the time to look at the benefits of accountability. Accountability will change your life. Yeah. For the better. Yep. Awesome. Well, anything else for you, Mr. Yarwood? No, sir. I think we covered it. Three, 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 three. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate each and every one of you that's listening, that is going to be listening. And those of you that have listened, thank you. See you later. And See you on the mats. I almost forgot. Uh